Music. Music for your life with Eternal Radio. End Time Hour is broadcast only on Eternal Radio, along with a host of other unique and excellent programs. Now Eternal Radio is even easier to listen to. You can do this by simply visiting eternalradio.org.uk. That's eternalradio.org.uk and clicking on the Listen Now link. Alternatively, you can listen in on your phone by downloading the TuneIn app or Eternal Radio's very own dedicated apps for both Android and iPhone. It's also possible to tune in on a variety of other platforms including Amazon's Fire TV. Also, if you have any questions for me or for other Eternal Radio hosts, please email us at onairnow at eternalradio.org.uk. That's onairnow at eternalradio.org.uk. Welcome to The Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall tell the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is part two of our special program all about EVP recordings as used by the paranormal community and others. Of course, nowadays it's really quite common for anyone to to, to buy these tools and, and to start using them um, in attempts to contact the dead. So we have Mark Hunneman again and he is author of seeing ghosts through God's eyes. He is a researcher and an exorcist and has been researching this area for many years now. And someone who I I highly recommend, um, I myself am an ex-spiritualist, so the whole notion of ghosts and, and communicating with ghosts is something that I've been really surrounded by since my teens. I'm now in my late 40s and, and really through le- reading lots of books on this subject down through the years, I highly recommend Mark's as being one of the best books I have read on this whole area. Now, um, you can find um, shows that Mark and I recorded last year. We recorded five shows, so that's a whole five hours worth of research in this area and you can find that on my YouTube channel Laura Maxwell Ex Spiritist and my blog which is ourspiritualquest.com Now let's go over to Mark in North Carolina and say hello Hey Laura Yes it is North Carolina and it's about 90 degrees here I think Doing good, how are you? Oh wow, it's definitely not that here in Scotland it's um Although it's June, it's uh, rather cloudy and rainy and grey, so... (laughs) Imagine that! I know. (laughs) (laughs) We did have a few nice days a couple of weeks ago, and it really did feel like the summer, but uh, hopefully we'll get some more of that again. And uh, Mark and I were just having a laugh before the show because Mark's um, computer kept freezing in my Skype. I just totally forgot how to operate it and i've only been using it for about three four years you know so (laughs) how you can forget to turn it on i have no idea but there we are so really mark (laughs) you know it's been so good so far um what you've been sharing with us and please really just jump right back into it and, and take take off from where you were last time okay we'll do just jump right in with both feet um and I, I I just wanted to start with the scripture, if it's okay. One Absolutely. verse, at, at, um, Romans chapter two, uh, twelve rather, verse two. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what the will of God is, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And what Laura and I are attempting to do in this these interviews is to help us. Um, to transform our minds in general, but in particular when it comes to the notion of EVPs and what the Bible 
has to say about uh, attempting to communicate with the dead for whatever reason, whatever the motives are. And uh, I think as Christians, we all agree that if Jesus is Lord, then he must be the Lord over the full spectrum of our lives. We can't pick and choose what areas of our lives that, you know, we would want Jesus to be the Lord over. Of course, none of us are perfect. We all slip every day. As some people talk about, most people have what is known as a besetting sin. Uh, it's something, but it's something they grieve over. Um, it's a particular sin that they may struggle with, whether if a guy it might be lust or something. But it's, it's something that they don't um, necessarily actually, well, it's something they fight against. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something they delve into as we'll see with the EVP phenomenon, people are jumping head first into that and doing it and doing it with a clear conscience. And uh, Laura and I, you can say this better than I can just because of your spirit, but neither of us are, are, are claiming any kind of um, superiority or righteousness, self-righteousness. We just really feel that this is an important watershed issue mm -hmm. and a lot of people are getting hurt um, by by uh, attempting to communicate uh, in the spirit realm. Did you want to pick up on that, Laura? Because you're so good at, at um, you know, conveying our motives for what we're doing, you know? Yeah, you know, I, I like chatting with you, Mark, um, on shows because I feel that the theoretical side, uh, you have really excellent research skills and um, at an intellectual level, you can explain things far greater detail than I can and yet on the other hand because I am an ex-spiritualist I have that experience of being involved in it all um, and, and really yeah just always always wanting to emphasize to our audience that no we definitely do not uh, feel that we are uh, perfect Christians or anything like that and we're not here to try and point the finger or be judgmental um, you know, neither are we Christians that just don't have a clue about these things and just talking off the top of our head. We have experience of these things. And my own experience, I was a spiritualist, so was my mother. She killed herself because of spiritual, uh, spirit communication. And in the last few decades, you know, we've been helping people in these same types of situations where they get attacked by spirits and so on. So we're not saying what we're saying to try and be self-righteous, not at all. Like Mark says, we still make mistakes, but we are not perfect. I, I often am amazed that, that God would even want to use me um, to, mm -hmm. to convey. You know, I think there's far many believers much better than me that could do this. Why is he choosing me? I don't know. But... It's our heart to really con convey to people that, that we're saying these things because we just want to gently, we, gently and lovingly warn you, share with you what we know so that you you are maybe a little more better armed to make decisions and choices about these areas of your life and um, t just to, to maybe reconsider reconsider some beliefs that you've held for so long. Yeah, that touches on is beliefs that you've held for so long because those are the ones that are the most difficult to give up, right, Laura? So mm -hmm. um, thank you for that um, sweet um, way of introducing this, this topic before we um, start digging and, and um, showing the, the problems with it. But, you know, in saying that, serious change when it comes to EVP or electronic voice phenomenon, it's not going to come easy. But that's what Laura and I are asking the paranormal community and, and people in general um, to consider, is to seriously consider serious thinking about your beliefs and your practices when it comes to, to attempting to communicate with the spirit realm, regardless of whatever mechanism you're using. And um, 
Not only is the collection of EVPs nearly universal in paranormal investigations, it's arguably the backbone of most paranormal investigations. So just for that reason alone, um, it's very a very significant issue. Mm-hmm. But as Laura pointed out in the very beginning, it bl- has bled over into the culture in general where people are attempting to use uh, recorders and other means to communicate with um, alleged dead relatives. And the EVP is uh, considered to be the main source of evidence that the paranormal community has come to rely on as an indicator of possible paranormal activity in a location. Hence, I don't think Laura and I need to go ramble on and on and on in order to try to convince you how serious and significant this issue is. Um, an honest seeker for paranormal truth is willing to go through the painful process of having their deepest assumptions analyzed. I can say honestly that I've had my beliefs change, theological beliefs um, regarding this, that, and the other, and it's not easy. And but I can say this: um, I learned early on that in the process of trying to to look through an issue that frequently the more painful um, the issue is as far as changing your mind, that is an indicator that it can be an ex- a period of an accelerated accelerated spiritual growth um, because God's calling you to, to faithfulness and if he sees you challenging or, or searching honestly the truth, even though it may be painful, it can really accelerate, It'd be a time of accelerated spiritual growth. But like Scripture says, <clears throat> like divine discipline, it results in the peaceful fruit of righteousness, Hebrews twelve eleven. And honest seekers of truth actually want distortions in their worldviews, in their um, beliefs, and in their practices, for example, regarding EVPs, to be cleared up because they know how easy, at least I do, to be Mm -hmm. self-deceived, especially regarding something that we have an emotional investment in. And certainly the paranormal community has an an emotional investment in in EVPs. This is one such assumption. It is deep, and EVPs are assumed to be a valid form of evidence by you know, the entire paranormal community. So, the collapse of EVP methodology would shake the very foundations of ghost theory, or at least of analyzing it. Mm -hmm. So, only the most honest of seekers of truth are going to be willing to listen. And I mean by listen, I'm thinking of the Greek word akuo, which means not just to go in the ear, it means to listen have an impact and a change on your life. Only really honest seekers of truth are going to move past this part of our interview and listen to Laura and I to arguments against the validity of EVPs, their effectiveness, and their safety. So I ask the question, are you an honest or a dishonest seeker for paranormal truth? And I think the fact that you're listening um, is indicator that you that you are honest, or you wouldn't have li- <laughs> lasted this long. Mm-hmm. Let me uh, throw out to you just a couple scenarios showing um, Laura's and I concern about a parallel that we mentioned last time between EVPs on the one hand and the use of Ouija boards on the other. Now, most people. Most, not all, but most people in the paranormal community um, do not like the Ouija board or the spirit board. Um, They'll at least say, if you're going to use it, make sure you have the right motive and you're very careful. Mm -hmm. But still, most of them are are just simply flat out against it because they don't know what kind of spirit you're going to bring in. And Laura's and I... um, Belief is that really there is no essential difference between soliciting EVPs 
and a Ouija board. And if we can successfully show that analogy, mm -hmm. and if you're willing to listen to it, then it should, underline the word should, it should persuade you to stop attempting to solicit EVPs. Because again, we both know that most people, uh, not you know, not all, but, but most people, there's a lot of people who are against um, using Ouija boards, but they're, you know, they'll do EVPs all day long. Um, so let me just use these two, two kind of scenarios and, 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 and listen to them, if you would, the kind of like illustrations. Consider a first scenario. Okay, Kim and David enter the living room. It's, it's dark. Um, they're doing a, a paranormal investigation, okay? First thing that they do is an EMF sweep just to get the overall um, idea of what's going on um, in the house. And then Kim asks, are there any spirits in this room? If there is, would you please tell us your name by speaking into this recorder that I have in my name? In my hand. Specifically, yeah. in my hand. And specifically, is Martha Webster here? who was a former owner of the house who had committed suicide in that room. And then upon review, to their delight, they discovered they had not one, but two Class A EVPs, both which were very intelligent responses from a, a person who claimed to be Martha Webster. Mm -hmm. Okay, so keep that in your mind as we move to the second scenario. The first one being kind of a, hopefully a um, clear... Uh, expression of what goes on in a um, uh, paranormal investigation. They're very, very abbreviated. All right. Second scenario. Both Tim and Sarah had the tips of their fingers lightly on the top of the planchette of the Ouija board. And Tim asked, are there any spirits here with us tonight? And the planchette shoots like a rocket to yes. What's your name? says Sarah, and it quickly spells S-A-R-A-H-H, -H, Sarah Webster. So they took their fingers off the planchette and watched in horror as it races so fast around the board that it begins to peel the paint off. Mm -hmm. From that moment on, they both came under demonic oppression. Mm -hmm. I actually um, was involved in a case in which that sort of thing, exact, exact, thing happened. Mm -hmm. The planchette raced around so fast it peeled the paint off. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of thing mm -hmm. that investigators look at and say, look, we don't know how these spirits are getting in. We don't know who they are. You know, stay away from um, these uh, spirit boards because you don't know who you're invest you're call um, who, who, who you're summoning in. Mm -hmm. And admittedly, that's an extreme example, but it graphically illustrates the dangers of both the Ouija, the Ouija board use, but also EVP. Because I, I want to ask this question. What is the difference? Laura, I ask you this too. Well, what's the difference between these two scenarios? None. They're mm -hmm. essentially the same. In the mm -hmm. first scenario, there's the, the, there's the veneer of the scientific because you've got the ghost box, the um, digital recorder, and so on, which seemingly sanction and legitimizes what is in reality no different than what happened in the second scenario. Mm -hmm. Don't miss the forest for the trees, y'all who are listening in these two examples, okay? Don't, don't get all upset that I'm equating these two. In both scenarios, there is a verbal request for any spirit to communicate. Mm -hmm. Please hear me. In, in, the, in the beginning, both, in both instances, there is a verbal request for any spirits that are there to communicate. And then there's a specific quest. Is Sarah Webster there? Now, how does the fact that you're holding a digital recorder as opposed to a planchette change this fundamental similarity in belief and in methodology? Mm -hmm. Okay, to me, yeah, it's, it's so clear. Totally, you know, if the, if there is a entity in the room, it will wish to communicate with you 
whether you're using a Ouija board, whether you're using EVP recording, whatever you're using, if you request, if you make a request into the spirit world to communicate with, with someone, then someone will take that offer and come through, whatever your um, mode of divination happens to be. Exactly. It's like, you know, what happens is that in the EVP situation, Laura, the room becomes like a giant Ouija board, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Because the questions are the same mm -hmm. and the intent is the same. Because mm -hmm. we can't say that all people that use Ouija boards are just playing around. That's not the truth. No. Some people who use Ouija boards are very serious. They're mm -hmm. very intent, very sincere, just as much as anybody who's using an EVP. So we can't just say that motive is everything. It's not. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is, yeah, motive counts some, but what counts most is what God's word says is right and what is wrong. And regardless of no matter how sincere you are, if God says something is wrong, no matter how sincere you are, it's wrong mm -hmm. if you're doing it. And Laura and I are just gently but firmly saying that if you have a uh, predilection pre that the Ouija board is something to be avoided, but EVP is something that's okay, we're trying to, to gently but firmly say you're being inconsistent mm -hmm. because they are doing exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. You are communicating with the spirit realm you're allegedly trying to communicate with the dead and can i say mark you know back in the day when my mother and i were spiritualists that is actually the kind of opinion we had we um and our spiritualist our, our medium friends we all felt that ouija boards were dangerous but yeah we, we wouldn't think twice about um using evp recorders or whatever was really available. Yeah, why is that? Why? Why? Per personally, uh. myself and my mother didn't use them, but in in theory and in belief, that is how we felt. So, um, yeah, just just because. Help me understand why you saw a difference. Did you think it through, or? Do you know we maybe we maybe did we maybe didn't? But I think ultimately we just felt for some reason Ouija boards can attract all kinds of entities even the really evil types, right. th therefore they should be avoided. But something like EVP recordings or um, just an ordinary seance, that usually only um, invites through good types of spirits. Uh, there's usually not um, much of a, a risk doing it that way. So I, I guess that was our, our attitude. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, but yeah now, now that I've been through such a lot, and my mother has and so many others, um, that's why we want to just ask folks to maybe reconsider that that type of um, belief and, and practice. Yeah, yeah, thank you. That's that's well said. You know, paradigm changes don't come easily. We know that mm -hmm. it doesn't come easily to community or to an individual with shared ideals and beliefs. But again, if you're an honest seeker for truth, which we all should be as Christians in all areas, then we should be willing to see what does and does not fit um, into a biblical worldview, even if it hurts, because the, the truth will eventually set, we, set you free. And um, again, we, we, meaning all of us, rightly warn people of the dangers of, of spirit board usage, like the Ouija board. Uh, should we not be equally concerned for our dear friends or ourselves who routinely engage in EVP sessions, um, that has become a, 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 a real burden of mine because I know an increasing number of people, Christians and non-Christians, are coming away from these EVP sessions um, with the intent of helping people, no mm -hmm. doubt, but mm -hmm. they're coming home with a demon demonic attachments, they're getting sick, physically emotionally and spiritually and they're wondering why mm -hmm. and and i'm trying to point out we are trying to point out that um this you could go about in different ways but if you can show the ouija board evp connection that 
that's kind of like a bombshell type thing, you know, uh, Laura, where um, it might open some people's minds instead of just being theoretical and saying EVPs are, are wrong, which they are. That is the attempt to communicate with the dead. Um, but what we're saying is that when a person uses a, a spirit board as it's intended to be used, you know, the the methodology is the same. Is someone there? What is your name? Mm-hmm. And the same thing happens when a person goes into a house and, and begins to communicate um, with any supposed or alleged spirits that may be in the house. And in both cases, if they communicate or connect with anybody, anyone, and it's not human spirits, it's demonic spirits. And we're told so clearly, so clearly in Leviticus 19 and chapter 20 as well of Leviticus, and that so, so clearly that God says that if you attempt to communicate with the dead, that if the community doesn't stop you, I'll stop you. That's really strong language. And God is using the language of love because he knows that, just like as parents, we wouldn't want our children to touch a, um, a red-hot stove. God knows that attempting to communicate with the spirit realm is fraught with danger. And so he tells us not to. Mm-hmm. But we, we're rushing headlong into it. And then you have Deuteronomy 18.11 that once again very clearly says, do not com- attempt communication with the dead. And Laura and I are kind of baffled. We have our suspicions as why people, Christians, still as clear as God is about this um, pro- prohibiting the attempting to communicate with the dead, why there's still this widespread practice of it. But I, I would just call to your attention that we started this interview off with affirming that if Jesus is Lord, then he's the Lord over the full spectrum of our lives. And that has to include everything, including and especially, um, you know, EVP EVP reform, you know, how we communicate, if we communicate with the spirit realm, certainly should come under the lordship of Christ. And I I really do believe we've come to a watershed point um, Laura, when it, in the Christian community, when it comes to the Lordship of Christ and whether or not we're going to choose to bow before the Lordship of Christ when it comes to this issue or not, um, God is not going to call you. Again, I say this gently but firmly. God is not going to call you to a ministry of EVP when he has condemned that those attempts clearly in the Bible. And in the Old Testament, it is just as um, authoritative today as it was um, when Moses wrote it. And everything in the New Testament indicates that what was written in Leviticus and specifically with reference to these occult sins is just as relevant today. Mm-hmm. And has not. Um, so my point is, is that you can't let whatever your subjective feelings that you think that God has called you to this ministry. God is not. He might have called you to helping people who are struggling with paranormal. But I can I can assure you that he has not called you to communicate with the dead via EVP, because then he would be speaking out of both sides of his mouth you know, condemning it in the strongest words, you know, calling it an abomination Mm -hmm. and then, you know, then turning around and uh, supposedly calling people today because I've heard people say that they feel like God has called them to this ministry. You can't. God doesn't do that. No, it's but with the the examples that you've given, it, it's kind of clear that whether it's a Ouija board, whether it's EVP recordings, any of these types of things are a mode of divination. It is trying to, attempting to 
contact the dead and and you know the bible shows us that that god says we shouldn't do that um and you know he's not just saying that because he's a killjoy or he doesn't want us to have fun or whatever there's a spiritual reason um and anything in the bible god asks us not to do it's because there's a powerful spiritual reason why not it's because he knows that many of these types of things will bring demonic problems into our lives and, and like a loving father he would warn his little child not to stick their finger in the fire because he knows they will get burnt um so but i think you know christians there seems to be more christians who are willing to get into ghost hunts or evp recordings or trying to contact dead relatives and I think it's because there's still many Christians who don't realise that these are actually demons in disguise. Um, right. They're, these are just spirits that are pretending to be uh, dead relatives. They can masquerade, like the Bible said, like shapeshifters. They can change their appearance exactly. and, and, a, and pretend to be anyone. They know all about your family night line. They know all about your mother's yep. side your father's side all down the generations so they can impersonate them um perfectly i think if a christian knew that then they wouldn't go near it but because they, they go to seances or, or um spiritualist meetings and this so-called dead relative comes through the, the proof it gives the evidence it works it seems to be real so you know they they, they fall for it um and um, so, th so perhaps they're thinking, well, yeah, I know the Bible says don't call up, don't try to contact the dead, but the Bible also says don't swear, don't uh, get drunk sometimes, don't flirt um, with other people, don't have adulterous thoughts. But hey, sometimes we have thoughts like that and God forgives us when we ask him, so he'll forgive us for trying to contact the dead too. But they're not seeing, and yes, God is forgiving, but we're not seeing the, the, the real crux of the matter is these are not dead people. They're actually demons, evil spirits who just want to uh, deceive you. And that is, I think, what a lot of folks just don't realize. So they're so tempted to continue with it. That's a, that's a, that's a yeah, that's, that's an extremely important point because... Uh, I guarantee you, every electronic voice phenomenon that has been recorded, and there's tens of thousands, if not more, that have been collected over, collected over the years, and every single one that's legitimate is demonic in nature, and is is there's not a human voice in the bunch. Um, and the thing is, is that in addition to that, is that this is an absolute law of God. And as I was talking with Laura before the show, um, this might come as a surprise to you, but the Bible does teach that there are degrees of sin mm -hmm. that doesn't minimize the, the importance or seriousness of any sin. Um, but in the, in the Old Testament, it gives this indicator when it talks about um, how certain sins are more serious than others because some were capital offenses, some weren't. Um, and in the New Testament, it's real clear that um, certain sins are more serious than others. Again, not to minimize the seriousness of any sin. And as we talked about at the outset, we all struggle with sin. But here's my point. And w when John, the apostle, says, no one can claim to be walking in the light and continue in sin, that doesn't mean that's he's not talking about perfectionism. What he's talking about is someone who just willy nilly um, claims to be walking in light, claims to be a Christian, and yet without a defiled conscience just continues to do something that they know that God's word clearly condemns and condemns not just as a um, I don't want to say that no sin is minimal, mm -hmm. but when in the Hebrew and the Greek, when it, especially the Hebrew, when it talks about these occultic sins in Deuteronomy uh, 18, uh, it, as everybody knows, it, it uses the word abomination. And it doesn't cause 
call all sins in the Old Testament abominations. This is why mm-hmm. God had the people in the um, the Canaanites slaughtered. To, to, mm-hmm. to put it bluntly, was because of the fact, in part, they were engaging in occultic sins, and this incensed God. And we have lost a sense of God's burning holiness. And if I was to say that there's one need in the Christian community today, it's a recapturing of the true nature of God the Father. And that, that, yes, he is loving, praise God, but he's also a God of burning holiness. And it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God as the word says. And then when he tells us not to do something, it is out of love, but he also says, be holy for I am holy. And no one, no man shall see, um, see God without, without holiness as Hebrews reminds us. So the point being is that if you're, if you're engaged in, collecting and soliciting EVPs, um, I'm, I'm asking you in the strongest terms possible, you must stop. In light of God's word, you must stop, and you must stop now. The word of God, it transcends any personal, quote, calling that you might have that's sanctioning you, because, because God is clear. And if someone continues in this sin, with a clear conscience, to me, Laura, and forgive me if this sounds harsh, but it's the same thing with abortion. If someone believes that it's okay to do EVPs, if they believe that it's okay to practice it in light of what Scripture says, then one of two things is either true. They are either abysmally ignorant of Scripture or they are not Christians. That's how strongly I feel about this notion of electronic voice phenomenon and how it is a watershed issue and how as a watershed issue, it, I say this with tears, Laura, mm-hmm. but that's what a watershed does. It, it, it creates a division between those people who in their weakness and stumbling are trying to bow before the full lordship of Christ over the full spectrum of life, and those who are picking and choosing um, those areas of the life that they're willing to to give to the Lord, and 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 just outright ignoring Him, even when the evidence is very clear, such as in Deuteronomy 18. There's no way a Christian can listen to Deuteronomy 18 and come up with any. Um, any clear um, rational excuse as to why they would continue. Yeah, I I think, you know, I I have met some Christians um, in ministry, in deliverance ministry, I've probably mentioned this to you before, where, yes, they are um, casting demons out of people and homes. That is part of their ministry and it is God-given to them. But they're also, um, along the way, come to believe in ghosts too and, and so they sometimes think they are helping a ghost onto yeah. the light to, to find Jesus and all that and they, they genuinely feel that, that you know that they're doing this and they're genuinely of um, good intent but what I think with these folks is rather than um, ignoring scripture you know like, like you're suggesting I think they genuinely feel that it's a grey area and that there are demons and there are ghosts and, you know, that that they're not uh, trying to contact the dead. They'll even say, you know, they're trying to help them. They're not trying to communicate with them. They're just trying well, to I get mean, them I... onto the light. And it's because of this confusion, I think, that so many people have right. got into it. But, but that's when I've said to them, well, try this then. If, if you are convinced there are ghosts try this um like the bible says test the spirits in in jesus name the next time you're in that situation and you think it's genuinely a ghost and not just a demon test it in the name of jesus christ of nazareth challenge it to show you its true identity because when people do 
I've not yet heard a person come back to me and say, oh, it turned out that really was a ghost. No, they always come back and say, oh my goodness, yeah, it, it was actually a demon. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm. Uh, um, you know, so I think I've done that, the same and uh, actually mentioned that in my book and challenged people to, to do the same. And I think, you know, like what you were saying about there being different levels of sin and abomination. Yeah, of, of, of all the, we all, we, we obviously we try to avoid um, sinful things in our lives and things we know are going to bring us problems. But of all the sins, it would appear to be the occult type sins happen to be the worst. Um, and, you know, perhaps they are attracting um, a, a, a more evil type of demon in, in Satan's hierarchy, if you like, and that's why God is calling it an abomination, because although all demons uh. are, are evil, obviously, uh. but those ones are maybe those that are closer to, for example, the types of demons that will come through at really evil types of satanic meetings or child sacrifice, so on. That's a good point. You that's know, interesting. Um, and perhaps that is why God warns all well, this. Well, one so, thing we do so, know so is so that every really... time, regardless of... I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. Huh. I, I just wondered if perhaps that's why um, God does warn of it so severely yeah. because it's a really, really evil type of demon that you're getting involved in. Um, it's, it's certainly in the deliverance ministry, I've noticed that through the last 20 years, people um, require deliverance for different things, I, I don't like the word exorcism quite so much, but whether it's, right. you know, a serious drug addiction or a serious pornography addiction, occult, uh, uh. occult, whatever the person's been in, it does seem to be that when it's been an occult type of interest the person's had, the, the demons seem to be particularly more, even more evil, if that yeah, can be. I, yeah, that, that's true. I mean, there's pure evil, but then... The they're all pure evil, but there then there's intensification because we know that Satan is mm -hmm. um, all demons are pure evil, but there's intensification and in more uh, intense forms of it. Mm -hmm. And I guess uh, let me clarify what I was saying earlier because I know it came across a little harsh, but it's it, Laura. What I was trying to say really was that it's the um, when you're when we are stating very clearly what should be um, persuasive to people, for example, the parallel between the Ouija board and EVP, and people choose to to not um, listen to that, then to me that speaks of a, a an unregenerate heart. And I say that again with tears in my eyes, with the intent that that would alarm a person to repent and bow before the Lord, because. A person, a person's softness before teaching, a person's softness and teachability, especially when it comes to a an issue that's that's close to their heart, and a lot of people, you know, spend a lot of time uh, and money trying attempting to help people. So mm -hmm. this is an emotional issue. Yeah. Issue. But a person's teachability really um, speaks a lot about their humility before the Lord. And I don't know a person's heart, but this I do know is that, uh, you know, if a person is not willing to think through um, their beliefs regarding EVPs, then it doesn't bode well for, in my mind, as far as evidence of being a, a true Christian. And that's that may be the difference as far as... Um, my being a little more harsh as, as far as challenging people because I just don't understand how something can be so clear and and rejected. But I do know that there's a lot of people who have a very real heart to help people. Mm -hmm. But you know the bottom line, Laura, is if if these Christians are going in and, again, the backbone of their work in the house is is communicating in one form or fashion with these spirits, mm -hmm. then they're going, by sinning against an objective law of God, they are opening doors, either opening doors to the demonic or widening doors that were already there. So mm -hmm. if they think they're helping people, they're they really they're not because they're making it worse than when 
they were before they got there because they have sinned against an objective law of God telling them not to try to communicate. So, and then, and to make it matters worse, since many of them believe in earthbound spirits, they're going to then communicate to the homeowners that in some instances it's okay because all they have is just a benign uh, human spirit there or, quote, residual spirit, which is unscientific theory. So they're actually in a worse case um, or situation than before the paranormal Uh investors came in because at least before they were concerned. But now they have this false sense of security based on a false analysis or identity of the entities that are there. When in the first, when we know that they shouldn't have been communicating with the entities in the first place. So, yeah. uh, for, absolutely, forgive not. me for getting a little hot under the collar, but it's hopefully it's because I'm so concerned. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I'm just I passionate mean, about. This I, I get that you're so concerned, you know, and like you say, so many of the paranormal investigators whether they're christian or not um they do invest so much of their time and energy into this um yeah. and the evp sessions and all of that um to to try and help the owners of the house but you know we're kind of suggesting from where we are we are that it, it, it's it would seem far more far easier and far more beneficial to drop all of that type of thing just go into the house and cast those spirits out in the name of jesus christ and get rid of them once and for all because you can do any yeah you can do evp exactly. sessions you can prove yeah there's definitely an entity in this house because the evp recording is showing it um you can use scientific mythology mythology to prove that the temperature has dropped or, or whatever but Right. Is that helping the owner of the house? You walk out and you say, yeah, you've got a, a spirit here, you've got this here, you've got that here. My EVP recordings are showing it. But they've still got the spirit in their house. How is that helping them? You know. And again, again, what I think, and they've actually made it worse by attempting to communicate with the dead. Yeah, so. because they're doing a form of divination which can open that door even further. And and. And their intent is good, and I applaud these yes. people who mean well, and their intent is Me good. Too. They Me want too. to help these folks who have these things in their house. But it's far, far better just to to, to, to realise this is actually demonic, impersonating spirits of the dead, impersonating spirit guides, impersonating aliens yes. from another planet, impersonating ascended masters. Challenge them in the name of Jesus Christ. Cast them out of that yep. house and that family Amen. is set free. Um, I wish, I wish, Laura, it, it, I, w- I wish that every person that hears this would pass this along to one or two of their friends who have a paranormal group and let them listen to this mm-hmm. and let them try this experiment, if you were, uh, will, that you said, mm-hmm. that whenever they come into contact with a spirit, to challenge it, have a, have, a, have a genuine Christian do it, challenge them in the name of Jesus Christ to reveal their true identity. Mm-hmm. In 100 out of 100 cases, it will reveal itself as a demonic spirit. Mm-hmm. There are no human spirits trapped on this planet. None. None at all. And any that are being communicated with, allegedly, they are demonic spirits, as as Laura has been uh, speaking to so clearly, Mm -hmm. mimicking uh, deceased relatives and so on. And we need to be aware of that. You know, absolutely. And and I feel what a transformation that could make to... Um, those in the paranormal community who who are attempting to help people, you know, a lot easier and a lot quicker for them to to do that. You know, first of all, obviously, you need to um, have Jesus Christ in your heart and come to that position of faith where you recognize he is the Savior and ask him into your heart. He then gives his followers the gift of discernment, the gift of casting out of demons, how much easier it would be to visit a home, walk in, just pray in that room, you know, cast them out in Jesus' name, 
and yeah. leave again. You, you don't have to set up your equipment and uh, look at all your EVPs and, and do all that. This is a, a quicker process uh, and it is dealt with. The people are set free. I think that could transform someone who genuinely wants to help people be free from um, these types of spiritual... I hope I hope that's what happens, is, is mm -hmm. that uh, the paranormal investigators, they... Because really, again, this whole thing, VVP, is really the backbone because it strips away a whole lot of really their their purpose for even existing. Because uh, what I really think is, I agree with you 100%, what we don't need is an investigation. What we need is if a house is infested, we need to have a uh, deliverance minister come in and get rid of the demon or demons um, that are there. And that's well. That's that's really what is is uh, mm -hmm. is most needed. And again, I hope and pray that that um, folks in um, in different groups that people people who are following along will share this with as many groups as possible, um, and that they'll think about this and uh, talk about it. And again, it doesn't make any difference, um, regardless of your motive or or anything. If if God says that you're not supposed to communicate with the dead, you're not supposed to communicate with the dead. Mm -hmm. That's it. And you know, no amount of of um, sincere motives, attempting to, to help people. Um, there's no qualifiers on that in the text in, in Leviticus and, and um, um, Deuteronomy because God knows that, it, as Laura was saying, that the spirits you're even communicating with aren't humans anyway. They're mm -hmm. demons, mm -hmm. and they're going to hurt both you as well as the clients. Mm -hmm. And, um, and believe your children it or not, as well, because it, it brings yes. it brings curses that will affect your children, your grandchildren, um, until it's dealt with and and um, you know mm. people stop doing it and get cleansed from it. It will affect your family as well, which is a tragic thing. Yeah, it really is. It really is. And the thing that uh, is also tragic is. You know, I've been doing this, honestly, Laura, for a pretty good while, and you longer than I. And having been a student of logic, I, I know that um, just because a person's an adult, that, that doesn't mean that they automatically know how to um, argue in a logical sense uh, very good um, <laughs> uh, or, you know, reason. Mm -hmm. And I, I know what a good argument looks like, and I know what a bad argument looks like. And what we've talked about today is both valid and sound, sound reasoning. Not to mention, most of all, it's, it's what the Bible teaches. And so for a Christian, this should, it should be persuasive if they have a soft, teachable spirit. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, but I know we both realize how emotionally attached many people are to communicating with the other side. Um, but it comes with an extremely high cost. And it's not always overt activity with crucifixes flying off the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, arguably, a worse form of demonic activity would be the covert activity where for 30 years you don't hear, smell, or see any paranormal activity, and yet there is a demonic in there mm -hmm. because of messing with the Ouija board or doing an uh, EVP session. Uh, what is it? What if every EP, EVP session does open up a door, as mm -hmm. I believe it does? Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4.26. But what if instead of the overt activity, there's a covert activity and you have a demon or demons who, quote, sits in a corner for 30 years mm -hmm. emitting this radioactive spirit, spiritual radioactivity, which is and most of all the religious bent of the people in that household. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so their full intent, if they can't, 
they'd much rather have people embracing a new age Jesus or anything that's going to send them to hell. Mm -hmm. And so that's my point is that, you know, there can be a strong demonic presence um, without there being, um, you know, a lot of covert, excuse me, overt activity. Um, exactly. You, you may be involved in these things and, and never experience anything unpleasant and therefore feel it's perfectly safe. But there is a demon or demons plural involved there and they will be affecting you and, and your life and your family even if you don't realise it. They'll certainly be affecting you at, at a spiritual level. Um, as Mark yeah. said, their main purpose is to keep people away from salvation in Jesus Christ. They don't mind what you believe in spiritually or what you practice spiritually as long as you don't come to Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. And you know, it's also it's a big entertainment these days, obviously, the ghost hunting programs and the EVP recordings and all of that. And um, I guess people would find that hard to give up if they've been involved in those types of TV shows. Um, but again, I think, you know, and yeah, because... People get addicted to these things, but if you genuinely want to help your clients, you know, you will give it up and you will just go to their home and cast those things out in Jesus' name and see the people set free. And the benefits of that far outweigh the the, the so-called fun and entertainment factor that, that these programmes um, appear to give. Um, Mark, we're almost running out of time. Could you please um, advertise your book and pray for the audience, please? Yes. Um, Laura, first of all, thank you, though, for the privilege and the honor of being with you again on your show. It's been a delight. Thank you. Well, thanks so much. Uh, and, and I appreciate um, your very kind comments uh, about my book, uh, Seeing Ghosts Through God's Eyes. And prior, prior to, I don't know, 2008, 2007, I, I didn't have any interest in the paranormal at all. And uh, long story short, I saw just how prevalent it was on TV and, mm -hmm. and um, refused to keep turning a blind eye to it and um, using logic and um, science and a biblical worldview, just looked at it from every angle I could. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it, uh, it you can find it on Amazon and it's in various forms. And so I'll just leave it at that. But it it. it it, it does challenge, um, and it's done in a different way because it's a worldview analysis. It asks questions like, um, what is God like? What does the Bible say God is like? And is the, the view or notion of ghosts compatible with the biblical view of God? Mm -hmm. Is it compatible with the biblical view of the afterlife? Is, is it compatible with the um, biblical view of, of uh, history and so on? And so in that case, it's different. But... Um, let's pray, shall we? Yeah. Heavenly Father, we bow before you and thank you that in your kindness and love you have spoken to us and continue to speak to us through your holy word. And it's easy to overlook how wonderful um, your living word is, um, first in Jesus Christ and then in, in the Bible. Um, when we read it by faith, that it is us speaking to us. And so, I, Laura and I, we lift up every person who, who, who hears this and ask that you would yes. maximally touch them and help them to persuade them by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that whatever words that we said that were of you, that you would water, and whatever words we said that were not of you, that it would be water off a duck's back, mm. and that you would take the veil, demonic veil, off people's eyes and help them to see the seriousness of this issue, perhaps by virtue of the analogy between the Ouija board and uh, the EVP. But by whatever means, Lord, please use this to start a revolution. Uh, first for your glory and then for the people, the dear people who are being hurt left and right by uh, communicating with a realm that was meant to be nailed shut. So, again, we put uh, the results in your hands 
and we give you all the glory and thank you for this opportunity in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Mark. And and listeners, please tune in again next time for part three of this series. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> speak to you thank again. Thank you. Th- speak right. to you again soon. God bless. God bless. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. 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 The views expressed in this production may not necessarily be those of Eternal Radio. Eternal Radio.